Drive My Car. Tell me all about it. Yes. <clears throat> so Drive My Car has been slowly expanding in release uh, here in the U.S. from Janus Films. And still not a wide release, still going very, uh, very, very slow. But there's a lot of hype for Drive My Car, considered the best international feature film uh, favorite at this point uh, from Japan, from Rizuki Hamaguchi. And Hamaguchi uh, has really just been on an absolute tear when you look into what he's been up to. In 2020, he wrote uh, the screenplay for Wife of a Spy, the film that won the second place prize at Venice in 2020. Then at Berlin in 2021, his move, his anthology film Wheel of Fortune and Fantasy came out and won the Silver Bear, the second place prize at Berlin. And then he released Drive My Car, his second film of 2021, which is largely expected to win an Oscar. So the dude has been an absolute fire right now. And, you know, you, you just love to see it. Drive My Car is an yeah. adaptation and kind of an expansion of this Murakami short story. Uh, one of my other favorite films uh, in recent memory, Burning from uh, Lee Cheng Dong, mm. was also a Murakami adaptation for context. And Drive My Car, to me, I, I would I would actually kind of expect, uh, honestly, I'll say I expect, I expect Hamaguchi to get Best Director nominated as well. For this film, lest we forget, the directing branch of the Academy has been very international the past few years. Remember, Paul Palakowski for Cold War got nominated. Last year, Thomas Vinterberg for Another Round got nominated. There's so much yes. love and adoration for Drive My Car that I, I think Hamaguchi is going to get in there. You know, it's been winning a lot. This movie's been winning lots of critics' first place prizes. It's kind of rare to see all these critics groups actually pick the same film for their number one pick. Alas, that's what we're seeing here. And you know, it's not a film for everyone. This is a three-hour film, uh, primarily in Japanese, but also in uh, several other languages, Mandarin, Korean, Korean Sign Language. So there's, it, it's a methodical uh, character drama in a foreign language. So it's inherently, you know, it's not Squid Game. It's not as easy as a sell as yeah. other stuff uh, from Asia. But I think it's absolutely worth everyone's time just because at no point does the movie feel like three hours. It, it never felt long. And it's so intricate and really well done at what it's trying to achieve. I was honestly blown away. I think it's honestly a complete masterpiece. I would have it in my top three, I would say. You know, obviously we did our best movies of 2021 before either of us had seen this film, so we couldn't rank it. I would definitely have it in my top three. I think I would have it number two behind The Green Knight. Uh, really impressive film. Wow. And obviously I won't spoil too much here, but just to like get, get the... Uh, get the the beats you know our, our central performer uh hideo toshi uh, nishijima who's a well-known japanese actor he plays uh yusuke uh, kafuku who is a well-known uh theater uh creator and he gets hired to move from tokyo out out west to hiroshima and do this multilingual performance of the famous Chekhov play Uncle Vanya and as he's you know casting this uh theater production which he's intentionally doing with multiple languages he catches people that speak Japanese Mandarin Korean Korean sign language the whole point is that it's like about like the breadth of a language and they're gonna put on this play with a big screen on top of the stage and everyone's lines will be translated because not everyone in the audience, most people in the audience don't know all these languages, right? They might only know one or two. So it's this whole right. big thing. And that's just kind of like our uh, establishing like, you know, plot because uh, Yusuke, his whole reason for doing this is because <laughs> this movie has a 40 minute cold open, has a 40 minute prologue where we learn about his relationship with his wife, who is a, uh, more famous like television actor a little more uh, in front of the camera uh, than he is and they have this whole relationship where after they uh ha are intimate uh she starts to like uh dictate uh creative ideas she has for scripts and things like that and it's like this whole like they have this very like specific creative process and on top of that she'll help him learn uh, his lines for his theater work by literally dictating into tapes the other lines of the scene 
and he will drive his car and uh, listen to her speak to him and then say his actual lines, you know, in time. And um, when he goes to uh, Hiroshima to, you know, put on this play, uh, the people that hired him won't let him drive his car because of a previous incident. So they will hire him a driver. And that's where we meet uh, the driver figure, the driver character, Misaki's young 23 year old. And she uh, starts driving Yusuke's car and uh, listening to all these tapes from his wife, um, who is no longer in the story once you watch the end of the cold open. And the movie just slowly progresses as these two characters begin to know each other. And it's, I think it's a really deep, effective movie about uh, communication, but also like loss and moving forward and what it truly means to know someone, you know, I guess in the the same vein in certain ways to after Yang, it's a very uh, methodical movie that still has a lot of interesting plot, but it never really goes where you expect it to go. All these things come up and it just doesn't do the obvious tropey thing at any time. So I don't, I really don't want to spoil anything. So I won't say too much more, but uh, there's just loaded with amazing performances uh, the red uh, Saab 900, the titular car, absolutely fantastic movie car, looks fucking awesome. And just seeing shots of this car driving around Tokyo, driving around Hiroshima, driving around uh, Hokkaido as well, like just looks so good. And like I said, I think Hamaguchi, like his whole approach to this storytelling is just so specific. And once you start watching the movie, you'll understand just how like intimate and like detailed a movie like this really is because it's not a movie loaded with tons of plot, but it just has like such rich character dynamics that uh, just fucking masterful, honestly. So I, I don't know when this will hit streaming. I don't think it'll be there anytime soon, but uh, once you have the chance to watch it, you definitely should. Uh, I just want to say 40 minute op- uh, cold open is a fucking flex. And the fact that you can do <laughs> something like that and have it work is just, I think, a testament to how I, uh, excellent this movie is can't wait to watch it fully expecting to love it 